Something else to tell you about tonight, fascinating images are being beamed down to Earth from Mars by NASA's Perseverance rover. The rover successfully landed on the surface of Mars earlier this week. Now, as data relayed by several spacecraft orbiting the red planet gradually comes in, the Perseverance team is relieved to see that everything is working as expected. By why is there such hype and excitement about this event? Let's ask that question to author and astronomer Emeritus Professor David Block. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, Prof. Why is is this such a big deal around the world? Well, I trust that you and your precious, precious listeners are all looking up. You know, whenever I have a chance to gaze, to set my eyes upon the planet Mars, I've always been intrigued by a sense of awe and wonder. And I'd like to tell you why. Uh, Mars is a planet very much similar to the Earth in many respects. Mars has got two polar caps, just like the Earth does. And then astronomers believe that there were uh, canals on Mars, the Schiaparelli's Canali, or canals which they believed were built by an advanced race of Martians having large heads and widely spaced nostrils. So the idea of life, maybe not always intelligent life, uh, certainly not life like we know, but life was believed by Lowell, Schiaparelli, and others to exist on Mars because it was rather similar to uh, the Earth. For example, Mars is tilted at 25.19 degrees, the Earth at 23.5 degrees to the vertical, the axis of rotation. The day on Mars is, much, is not much different to the length of the day on the Earth. So when these astronomers way back in the, in the 1800s to start with started mm. seeing these canals, they immediately, you know, their imagination went wild and they immediately, uh, you know, boarded this massive, massive media hype, as it were, that Mars is inhabited. And not only is Mars inhabited, but it's inhabited by an advanced race of Martians. And that is really the seed bed behind Perseverance, which has just landed uh, this past week. On and Prof, Mars, is and that, it's to try and get an uh -huh. answer to that question. And just on that question then, how long and what would we be looking for in order to find out if humans would be able to inhabit Mars? You know, the uh, question there, and that's such an interesting question, is always related to water. I think that whenever water is found on a planet, the human mind the human neurophysiological processes always ask the question, has there been life there, even intelligent life there? And so forth. Now, there's something very important to your question. This uh, robotic spacecraft, Perseverance, didn't land just anywhere on Mars. The site was meticulously chosen by the team to land in Jezero Crater. Now, what is Jezero Crater? That is the heart of the crossing tonight. Jezero Crater is the remains, believed to be the remains, of an ancient lake, an ancient lake on Mars. In fact, one part of the crater is believed to contain a fossilized delta, a water delta. And so the idea is to drill down deep into the surfaces of Mars, drill down deep get soil samples, analyze for any sorts of water. Because if they can find any sorts of water, the immediate next step is then to search for prebiotic life. So that is why they've landed there. They want to ask this key question. I mean, we all have such inquiring minds. I remember sitting with former President Nelson Mandela here, and here I am over here, and Mandela was asking very probing questions. We have very minds filled with war, awe, wonder, and uh, the deepest of intrigue. And so the uh -huh. question, as it lands on Jezero, is 
has primitive life ever existed? And Prof, red Mars? sorry for cutting you off. I hope my question now meets your high standards then. You may, keep making the reference to intelligent life. In yes. simple terms, for those of us who've not been following the story, what would that be? Well, I have no doubt that no intelligent life would have been found on Mars because there have been innumerable expeditions to Mars, and Mars simply doesn't have the atmosphere to support intelligent life. By intelligent life, I mean life like Dave Block or Henrik van Dierfenter, or whoever we're thinking about, Nelson Mandela, intelligent life, you know, self-aware human beings. No such beings exist on the planet Mars, that's we sure of. But I'm talking here of prebiotic life. I'm talking here about life that may have existed, maybe just a single cell, maybe a couple of single cells, uh, joined together. I'm talking of the simplest form, life forms. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about intelligent life. I would not be surprised, and I've said this to audiences around the world, I would not be surprised that we are alone in this universe spanning 14 billion light years. I'd not be surprised if we're alone in terms of intelligent life. In other words, life like you and I know it, life with a brain power to understand black holes, the collapse of giant molecular clouds, the rotation curves of spiral galaxies. I'm talking of intelligent human-based life. That, I believe, is exceedingly rare. We may well be unique. But the Mars probe is to look for primitive life forms. And very briefly, please, Prof, uh, some of the articles I was looking at today made a lot of mention about the fact that on Thursday, the first pictures we got back from the rover were in black and white. By Friday, we're beginning to see more color. We saw the uh, red color of the Martian surface. Is that incredibly significant at this point? It is. I think that's a very uh, beautiful observation you've made. The surface of Mars, those pictures reveal that we're looking at ferrous oxide. And that's very interesting, that's rust. You know when you go on holiday at this coast, you see rust, it's that color. Ferrous oxide is caused with a combination of iron and oxygen. And of course, there's one of the key points, key feeder points towards the search for life is water and then oxygen. So it's very clear that at one stage, not now, but once, the oxygen content on Mars was higher and contents of other life-giving gases were higher. And that's what makes this whole probe so interesting is, is it possible that life, not intelligent life, but life, prebiotic life even, could have existed on this planet, which you've so brilliantly observed tonight, is colored red. The soil is colored red. And that's extremely hopeful because it tells us that oxygen and even the corrosive effects of oxygen uh, were once very prevalent All right. on the Martian surface. Professor Block, I wish you had been around when I was trying to learn about uh, planets in high school. Thank you so much for speaking to us. That is author and astronomer, Emeritus Professor David Block.